Hello. In this clip from our Justia webinar, Google Advertising, PPC, and LSAs, Differences, Do's, and Don'ts, Samantha LaRousse talks about practices you should avoid when utilizing PPC and LSAs. If you want to see more Justia videos on law practice and legal marketing, be sure to subscribe to our channel. All right, and we have made it to our last section. Um, just a quick recap on the LSA pointers. Um, make sure you know you keep those verifications up to date, get the verified reviews, make sure you are interacting with the interface, preferably on the app, um, and keep that responsiveness score up. So from there, we will go ahead and dive into, you know, what things we should avoid when we're dealing with the PPC and or LSA accounts. Um, so first things first here, I know I briefly mentioned this earlier in the presentation, but definitely worth noting again, anyone running PPC ads, Sometimes we get these with the LSA, it's mostly on the PPC side of things, um, has probably been contacted by a Google rep with some kind of urgent message about fixing problems with your ads. Um, if you did XYZ, your ads would perform exponentially better. You just need to follow our recommendations. Please do not go into panic mode when you get these calls or messages from Google. Um, in our experience here at Justia, these reps, you know, they really like to over exaggerate whatever's going on to try and get you to agree to a meeting with them. And then that turns into a sales pitch to try and get you to, you know, utilize whatever new feature Google's trying to push this month, usually for the benefit of Google, not necessarily your business. So. Hopefully you're working with a good agency that can help you kind of field these requests, decipher what is actually a problem versus, you know, Google just trying to get you to sign up for the latest thing. Um, you will see all of these recommendations on the recommendations tab of the interface. I talked about this earlier, a couple that, you know, yes, go ahead, take advantage of these. Um, but there definitely are some where, you know, you really want to think before you move forward. Um, take this one in the center that we're looking at here for the basically they're suggesting that you add broad match variations of all of your existing keywords. Um, do we really want to do that? Do we really want to enable broad match keywords for your entire campaign and open yourself up to having your ad trigger for a search like can't afford a lawyer for my divorce or even just the word lawyer when your target is searching is trying to get someone who's looking for a divorce lawyer probably not those are very irrelevant either off topic just the word lawyer very vague um and these are actual examples that i pulled from accounts that were using broad match keywords so it's really you know not what you want to be wasting your ad spend on but when you do this, it does mean that generally your volume goes up and there's more money in Google's pocket because all of a sudden you're opened up to this much, much wider variety of different keywords that are available to trigger your ads. So, you know, of course, from Google's end, this is great. Enable broad match, do that. But for you, realistically, and your firm, probably not, you know, the thing that you want to do. Um, another example here that we see a lot is setting a target CPA or cost per acquisition. Uh, basically, another way of saying that you don't want Google to spend more than X amount on any given conversion that's coming from your campaign. So this might sound intriguing to some of you, especially if you know your conversion costs are on the high end, but you have to really think about what that means. If Google is going to constrain your ads to meet a lower price point, that means they're going to start favoring your ads to show for lower price searches. And lower price searches usually means lower quality. So yes, you might be saving a little bit of money on that conversion. But if the overall conversion quality takes a dive, is that really going to help your firm? It's just something to think about. Sometimes, you know, situations are different and you have to do what's best for you. But I just, you know, the point is don't 
blindly follow anything that's showing up here. Um, I'm going to look here. I wanted to talk about performance mass max specifically because I know I skipped that. That was the first uh, little recommendation on the previous slide. I want to talk about it in a little bit more detail because Google has been pushing this pretty hard lately. Um, advertising basically that these campaigns have the ability to find more converting customers across all of Google's channels. They make it sound really great. Um, but what you don't realize until you dive a bit deeper is that you're putting Google in full control. You don't get to choose the channels where your ads are being served. You don't get access to any audience data that can, you know, kind of help inform decisions related to your ad performance. You also don't get access to any keyword data. So, you know, in my opinion, having, you know, worked with ads for a long time, these are like crucial elements that really help you make informed decisions about what you're doing. And Google's taking all that away. So again, I'm just like really pushing this point at the end of the day, use common sense, make decisions based off of what will actually benefit your business um, and what's good for your firm, not necessarily what is good for Google. The next thing that I want to talk about on, you know, what not to do is setting up your LSA and then doing nothing with it. And I know I talked about this, um, you know, you go through the hassle of getting these ads all set up. You have to jump through the hoops of passing the background check and doing the verifications and all of that. And then after the fact, for you to not log into the interface after and expect that you're going to see great results is not entirely realistic. So, you know, you may get away with it for a little while, but if you really want to maximize the performance of your ads and, you know, also avoid paying for bogus leads, you need to be actively on there, whether it's using the app, you're using the desktop interface, you know, hopefully the app, but, you know, no matter what, be on there, monitor what's going on. Um, another thing to really look out for with the LSAs, and this is, it's kind of a fine line because, you know, obviously you don't want to pay for leads that are not qualified, be wasting money with, um, you know, bad calls, spam calls, whatever the case may be. But you also need to be reasonable with your expectations and not go crazy with disputing every little thing that comes through that isn't, you know, the perfect case. So, you know, overdoing it with the disputes, it can be a negative signal to Google and cause your lead volume to drop. So just make sure you keep that in mind when you're going through your leads. Um, you know, maybe the call in question, it wasn't great quality. Um, and give an example, like you're advertising for car accidents in the personal injury vertical. And this potential client calls in, it's a minor accident. There's no real injuries. It's not something that, you know, you're going to take as a case. You know that after you, you know, talk to them, what have you. But since technically this was a call related to a car accident, you might be better off just letting it slide uh, versus, you know, being overzealous with the disputes. You really have to handle it by, you know, in a case by case basis, use your best judgment. But at the end of the day, you just don't want to go too crazy with the disputes to the point where Google decreases your overall volume because of it. Once you get into that mode where Google has kind of starts to limit the calls that are coming through your ads, it's really hard to kind of dig yourself back out of that. And the final kind of no-go for the day that I wanted to discuss is about the actual setup of your PPC and LSA accounts. So technically, Google will allow you to set up both types of ads on the same CID. Do not do this if you can help it. Um, not only does it make things a bit confusing when you have two totally different ads running in the same account, it also, the bigger thing is that it poses an issue when your ads are connected like that. Um, see if you have, you know, some kind of policy violation on the PPC side of things and it causes your ads to be dispensed, uh, suspended. Even if it's just temporary, 
that's going to affect your LSAs as well. So, you know, keeping things separated means that, you know, it's just a little bit more organized, easy to keep track of everything. But it also means in those situations that you're not going to have one ads account impacting the other in that way. All right. So, you know, with that, we have come to the conclusion of our presentation. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, I really hope you were able to take away some valuable information and, you know, you can turn around and use that for your own firm's marketing and you really got something positive here. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos on law practice and legal marketing. See you in our next clip.